If I could go back 7 years to when I wrote my first line of code, there are a lot of things I'd do differently. I'm way smarter and harder working now. If I did it all over, it would take like 7 minutes starting April 2012. Instagram sells to Facebook for $1 billion. I think to myself, if I make something like this, I'll be set for the rest of my life. July 2012. I just graduated high school so I spend the summer learning how to code, starting with a book called Head First Java. I release my first piece of software, an Android app that teaches you how to do card tricks. It gets a few thousand downloads so I make more apps, including a workout tracker and an extremely useful app that makes your phone vibrate non-stop like a shaver. But this was only a stepping stone to improve my coding skills for something bigger. September 2012. I moved from my hometown of Vancouver to Toronto to start university. I won a full scholarship to study life sciences at the University of Toronto and was supposed to become a doctor. But what I really wanted to do was build the Instagram for short videos. December 2012, I signed up for a startup pitch competition. Though I didn't have any traction or even a founding team, I had two advantages over the other students in the competition. First, most of them were business majors who couldn't code, but I had a prototype. Second, I was pitching a social app in the golden age of app startups. I named the company Cam Squad, and we were going to be the first to make mobile videos fun, convenient, and social. March 2013, I pitched Cam Squad to a panel of judges and come second out of over 60 teams. I was happy to come second because one question had me flustered. Have you heard of this app that Twitter just released? May 2013. I ditched my startup and start my first job. I was working remotely as an Android developer for a university research project, so I did it while on family vacation in Hong Kong. I also started thinking about what I want to build next. I'm determined to go down the startup path and have already switched my major to computer science. Paul Graham, founder of Y Combinator, says the best startup ideas tend to be things that the founders want themselves. But I'm a 19 year old kid who doesn't want many things. Hey, wanna go to the park? Nope. Then it hit me. I don't have hobbies, but I'm pretty good at video games. August 2013, I released my first game, Parachute, on the App Store. Parachute set me down a three year path of making indie games. My games started getting tens of thousands of downloads, and I began caring less about building a business and more about validating my own self worth by getting as many downloads as I could. It's kind of like making YouTube videos. May 2015, the summer before my final year of university, I needed to find a way to make enough money for my games so I can continue full time after graduating. So I devised a strategy. I was going to get millions of downloads by getting a game into the featured section of either Google Play or the App Store. In order to do this, I needed to get my game selected by the editorial teams at Google or Apple. The large mobile game publishers have tight relationships with the editorial teams and usually get most of the featured spots. I use Unity and start creating one prototype after another and pitch them to the major publishers. October 2015. After four of my games get rejected, my fifth game, Frantic Architect, gets me a contract with Bulkypix, one of the biggest European publishers. The plan is to finish the game under their guidance and trust them to handle the marketing. I tell Bulky Picks I'll finish the game in two months, but then some things get in the way. November 2015. I start seriously doubting Frantic Architect. Why should Apple or Google feature my game beside high quality and innovative titles such as Flappy Bird and Kim Kardashian Hollywood? I switch focus to landing a full time job as a software engineer so that I could chill for the rest of my final school year. I start spending hours every night playing Blizzard's digital card game Hearthstone. This got me hooked on watching Twitch streams. My favorite streamer was Amos for a few reasons. He was a dropout at a nearby university, Waterloo. He was an entrepreneur who founded his own esports team. And he would sometimes randomly start speaking in Cantonese. But no one knows what he's talking about because his Twitch chat is that fun in English. January 2016. I get two course credits to take part in a startup incubator at U of T. My startup sucks and it takes my GPA as well. March 17, 2016. It's been a week since BulkyPix submitted my game to Apple for the App Store approval process. I get a Skype message from my product manager and he tells me, Frantic Architect has been featured worldwide on the App Store. Initially, people were downloading it from the best new game section, which propelled it into the top free app section. Over the next two weeks, Frantic Architect will get 365,000 downloads. The game only generated $2,500 in ad revenue, but I never thought it would make a lot of money. I mainly wanted to prove to myself that I can make a hit game, and I did it. But there was something wrong. I wasn't receiving any payouts. August 2016. Bulky Picks files for bankruptcy and I don't get paid a penny for Frantic Architect. But I'm okay because I've already started my first job out of university, working on an app which provided esports news coverage. My plan is to work for a year and do my side projects in the evening. In reality, I spend most of my nights climbing to legend in Hearthstone, the highest ranking achievable on the monthly ladder. I tell myself, one day, I'm gonna go from playing on my computer in my apartment to playing on a fancier computer in a tournament somewhere and win a lot of money, so all my effort was gonna be worth it. Around this time, a new personality was taking over the Hearthstone world. He wore a piece of bread on his face with a fake mustache, and his name was Disguised Toast. 
There was something about his dry sense of humor that I found hilarious, so I watch his stream every night while I eat dinner. Oh, and he went to Waterloo. May 2017. My efforts in Hearthstone are going nowhere, so I started a new project with a friend, a League of Legends training site. We never get it off the ground, but I'm finally back in the startup game, and I decide to quit my job. June 2017. I always thought it would be cool to have a YouTube channel, and I figure there's no better time now that I have no job and no startup idea. I make a tutorial on how to create the Monument Valley illusion using Unity, and realize how much time it takes to make tutorials. I'm also not very passionate about the content, so I give up after 4 videos. August 2017. I start building a website, 7d2dserverhosting.com, which unexpectedly goes on to generate $35,000 in lifetime revenue. I also do freelance Unity and web dev. I just wanted to make enough to get by so I could work on a real startup and I didn't know what that would be, but I knew where I wanted to build it. November 2017. Okay, time for plan B. I interview for The Next 36, a Canadian startup incubator, which was originally supposed to be a reality TV show, kind of like Big Brother, but for 20-something-year-old startup founders who have to live together in university dorms. One of their alumni went on to become the Waterloo Twitch star himself, disguised toast. I get in with no idea what I wanted to work on and stumble around for a few months, until May 2018. I join a ragtag team to start a company called Puremark, a counterfeit protection platform for Chinese consumers buying luxury Western products in China. We receive $71,000 in investment funding and grants. Michael Seibel, CEO of Y Combinator, says that early stage investors look for teams that can iterate quickly on their product. One of the best ways to do this is by talking to your customers to figure out how you can help them better. Unfortunately, I can't speak Mandarin. So, what do you think about our app? Okay then, I'm glad you liked it. February 2019. Nine months in, we're only able to secure one client, so we reduce our burn rate to the minimum in order to save remaining funds for a pivot. Around this time, Amaz starts streaming a new indie game called Dota Auto Chess, and it explodes. I play over 200 hours of Auto Chess in the next two months. We name this channel after my gamertag and start making Auto Chess videos to make myself feel productive. Eventually, I don't want to play so much anymore, but I want to keep making videos. I'm inspired by a handful of tech YouTubers I enjoy watching, and decide to start talking about software engineering and startups. March 2019. I pitch a new startup idea to my co-founder. I sell him on my vision for the future of content creation. And that's how we're going to make a billion dollars. So remind me, why am I working with you again? Because I went to the University of Toronto. May 2019. Seriously though, we did actually pivot to making some software for content creators, so I thought it'd be fun to make these videos and bring you guys along. Anyways, I'll show you what we're working on in the next video. See you then.